All right. Shalom. Call Halim La Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Harakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered across the earth. Let me see. This is your brother Allah coming to you with another lesson. And, uh, you know, Lord willing, this lesson won't be too long, but it'll uh, probably have some length, length to it. Right. So, uh, and um, Lord willing, the elect of Yahweh by Shemi, I wish I'd be edified. But this will be going into, um, or the title of this lesson, Lord willing, will be Exhort to Endure the Trials. Right. Or Exhort to Endure. Maybe that'll be it. Exhort to Endure. All right. So let's get right into it. And yeah, this will, you know, probably be, uh, you know, more than 30 minutes. But we'll see, you know, it's all the Lord's will. Second Timothy 2 and 1. Uh, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Well, this is Second uh, Timothy 2 and 3. Yeah, so like, yeah. I've been wanting to uh, get to this lesson. You know, I got scriptures written down. But, uh, yeah, this is Second Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Verse 4, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except, uh, except he strive lawfully. You see? And notice it says strive. Right? The scriptures say uh, strive, if I'm not mistaken, strive for the truth unto death. <clears throat> yep. Ecclesiast Ecclesiasticus 4 and uh, 28. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. You see? So within this truth, a big factor is striving, right? Enduring, fighting, you know? And, you know, a fighting demons, you know? That's a big one. And really fighting yourself, you know? Or that old man, rather. You know? <clears throat> which when you read Romans, the seventh chapter, which I might have that written down. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I got it, man. Well, yeah, Romans, the seventh chapter goes into that, right? But I'm going to try and, you know, not, I'm, I'm going to try and not have this lesson be long-winded. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, Right? Verse 2, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And uh, it's cut off right there. But that should say, um, and make not haste in the time of trouble, if I'm not mistaken. So let me. Ecclesiastic is 2. And uh, 2, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. All right, verse 3, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. For whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower estate. Verse 5, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Verse 6, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way of right and trust in him. See that? Right? And a part of prophecy is that, is that um, some will be cast into prison. Right, Revelations 2 and 10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation 10 days, right? A number of complete, uh, uh, a complete amount of days. 
be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, man. So you have to be willing to die for Yahweh Bashimi Awashai. You see? Hey, the scriptures tell you. Let me see. Lay down life. Let me see. Lay down his life for a friend. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. The water you held by Shimei John 15 and 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Right? He's, but, you know, I'm applying that to the Lord. You know? You got to be willing to lay down your life for the Lord, man. You know, you got to remain faithful unto death. But which ultimately is not of us, you know, but those who the Lord ordained to uh, remain faithful unto death and remain faithful, period, and endure to the end, you know. Let me see. Uh, second address seven. Let's see. Yeah, I haven't went over this in a bit, you know. But uh, second address seven and one. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me an an, uh, the angel, which had been sent unto me the night before. And he said unto me of Esdras, right? Which when you read, you know, you got the book of uh, book of Ezra. Ezra and Edris, Esdras are uh, the same, right? Which had been sent unto me the night before. And he said unto me of Esdras, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he would not do the narrow, how could he then, Salaki, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing. A city is built, right? It's set upon a broad field. And it's full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall. And as it were, and as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water, and one, and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once, which makes me think of uh, when the scriptures say, um. Uh, What is, what is it? Work out your own salvation. Yeah, the water you held by Shimei Al Washai. With fear and trembling. Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See? Second Edger 7 and 9. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass through the danger, I'm sorry, pass the danger said before it, how shall he receive his inheritance, this inheritance? And I say, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. Then was the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought a mortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight things, uh, straight and vain things, they can never receive those things that are laid up for them. Right? Verse uh, 15. Now therefore, why disquietest thou thyself, seeing thou art but a corruptible man? And why art thou moved, whereas thou art but mortal? Why hast thou not considered in thy mind this thing that is to come, rather than that which is present? Verse 17, Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bears rule, thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. Verse 18, Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things, and hope for why, for they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things, and yet shall not see the why. 
right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Right? Because Yeah, man. He that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. You know? And that that's plain, you know? Let's see uh First Corinthians ten and thirteen. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But the Most High is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. And that's a, um, you know, that's a, a beautiful scripture to have, you know, in your, um, in your uh, remembrance, you know. Because as we grow, in order to in order to grow, you have to go through things, man. Right, just like that 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 um, gold that's tried in the furnace or tried in the fire, rather, it has to go through that fire in order to be brought forth to that pure state, right? It doesn't just you know you snap your fingers and it's to that pure state. No, it has to go through a process. Right, you got that term in the world, trust the process. You got to trust the process of that the Lord has us going through, man. You got to trust the process. You got to go through it and not just go through it, but grow through it, which you will, you know. All right. Let me see. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> This is the book of Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Right? And that's why it's very important to meditate upon the promises and the things to come. Right? And that that that's beneficial in many aspects because it keeps you from um it keeps you out of that spirit of thinking that this place is your rest. Because even the scriptures tell you, for we look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right? Let me go to Second Peter 3 and 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right? You know? So that's why it's important to meditate upon the different promises, right? The different things. That are going to happen, right? The new bodies, us being made perfect, right? You know? Hey, man, you know? No more GMOs and all this, you know, bullshit, you know? That's why, that's why it's important to meditate upon those things. Because in the scriptures is our peace, man. In the scriptures is our peace, our rest, you know? This truth, you know. Let's go to First Timothy six and twelve, and this might not be that long. Maybe around, you know, thirty minutes, forty minutes, you know. But hey, you know, it's all the Lord's will. First uh, Timothy six and twelve. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses, man. You got to fight the good fight. This is a good fight, you know? Because look at what we're fighting for, man. Right? Hey, man, we're working for, for the power of the universe, bro. <laughs> you know? There's nothing better than this, man. You know, look at these other people. Hey, you know, the Lord, hey, call Halayim La Yehawah Ba Shimi Awashai Ba Shem Harakakwadash. 
you know, about to be brought to tears, man. Right? Let's see, Acts 14 and 22. Uh, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Right? We have to exhort each other, man. The scriptures tell you, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what, ex uh, no, that I think that's comfort one another daily or something like that. Or maybe exhort one another daily. Right, but uh, and Lord willing, that scripture will come to me, or you know, it gets brought brought out through the Spirit. But uh, Acts fourteen and twenty two, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, <coughs> that we must, Salakia, <coughs> and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Right, through many tests, through many pro, through many uh through many trials, right, through much tribulation, you see, let's look up that word, tribulation, a cause of great trouble or suffering, see, which that our temptation when the MOTB is implemented is the big test, right, that's the big test. They would those Let's see Revelations three and ten. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see? You gotta pray that the Lord puts the spirit on you to endure in those times, you know? And we got to be praying more and watching more in these days, you know. And real quick regarding that, I'll just get Luke 21 and uh, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be account accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall, that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Right, but let's go to. Second Timothy 4 and 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Right? Endure afflictions. Right? Matter of fact, let's look at that word endure. Really, it means to... Uh, Definition. Suffer something painful or difficult patiently. Scripture said uh, in Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter, be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Endure. Right? As a matter of fact, we could go here. Um, yeah. Which this is a good tool to use, right, endure, to undergo or suffer, look, tolerate, bear, make hard, look at that, make hard, right, because um, they got a saying, let me see if I could get it right, Lord willing, uh, hard times make strong men and, and, and uh, soft times make weak men, something like that, something like that. But it's because it mentioned to make hard. Right? You're being you're being strengthened, man. You see? Through certain processes you go through. Or rather, by way of certain processes you go through, you come out a certain way. And matter of fact, that's what that's what uh Job's that's what it says in the book of Job. Job twenty three and ten. But he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold, man. You see that? Let's go back to the well, let me see, second Timothy four. Uh second Timothy four and six, for I, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. 
I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, right? And we're not done yet. There's much more work to do. We have to finish the course. Then the honor comes, right? But you got, what's in the, uh, Priest Sabat, I believe he's in a HOI, if I'm not mistaken, right? Right, but he had a, basically a, a birthday, you know, celebration. And he was sitting on the throne, you know, like a king. It's not time for that, bro. We haven't finished the course, you know? Verse 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. See? Let's see, Second Timothy 3 and 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the, uh, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Right, verse twelve. Yeah, uh, yeah, verse twelve. Yeah, and all of that will live godly in a Mashiach. How I I shall suffer persecution. Look, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, which is happening now. Right? You see? Yeah, man. Let me see. First Peter 4 and uh, 1. For as much then as Hamashiach hath suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourself likewise with the same, so like you arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath seized from sin, that he no longer shall live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. You see, but it mentioned arm yourselves with the same mind, right? Let me see. Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though something, uh, some strange thing happened unto you. Verse 13, but rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings, right, the anointed, the anointed sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may also, ye may be also, I'm sorry, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. 14, if ye be reproached for the name of the anointed, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of the most high resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a, it says Christian, but that should be Israelite, really. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the Most High on his behalf. But, but really, but let him glorify Yahweh by Shimei was shy on his behalf. Right? Okay. Let me see. Let's go to the book of James, right, 1 and uh, 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye are fall, when ye fall into diverse temptations, Salapia, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing and lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High, that giveth to all men. Hold tight. James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh by Shemi Awashai, that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. 
verse 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8, a double-minded a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right? Jumping down to verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Wow. You see? This is the book of Acts. Let me see. Yeah, Acts 20 and 16. Let me see real quick. Acts 20 and 16. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus, or Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, verse 19. Serving the Lord with all humility of mine, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. Right? And that's how you, that's what you want to be doing. You want to be serving the Lord with all humility of mine. You know? It said, and with many tears and temptations. See? Let's go to uh how we can stay in that chapter. 20 and 22. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Acts 20 and 22. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Spirit witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Right, verse 24, and none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Yahawashai to testify the gospel of grace. I'm sorry, to testify the gospel of the grace of the Most High, whose name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahawashai. That's beautiful, man. I gotta read that again, Acts 20 and 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Yahawashai to testify the gospel of the grace of the Most High. Beautiful, man. Yapa. Which Yapa means beautiful. Yapa is Hebrew. means beautiful. You know? Let's go to... Let's see, Acts 21 and 10. Acts 21 and 10. Uh, let's see, Acts 21 and 10. Right. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus, and when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own. All right, hold on tight. Uh, let me see. And bound his own hands and, and feet, and said, "Thus saith the Holy, uh, thus saith the Holy Spirit: So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles." Verse twelve. And when we heard these things. Both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready to not be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Yahawashai. Verse 14, And when he would not be persuaded, we seized, saying, The will of the Lord be done. 
right? Let's go to, yeah, the book of Matthew. Yep. Matthew 5 and 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Okay. Right? And, um, you know, it's a few examples. But that'll make this, that'll make this lesson, you know. Yeah, 31. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's go into it, man. Um, a few examples on enduring. Right? This is the book of Job. I might read the whole chapter. Or I might just, you know. But uh, Job 1, and I'll start at 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them, showing Satan is also a son of the Most High. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the most high and escheweth evil, meaning shun, shuns evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear the most high for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But pull forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 16, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of the Most High has fallen from heaven, and I burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yeah, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. And fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Right, because he lost many things. You see, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And regarding verse 21, that shows that uh, the Lord had it to where Job understand, understood uh, balance, right? That the Lord is balanced. Because he said... Uh, the Lord gave and the Lord have taken away. That's a balance. Bless, and he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Right? And all this Job sinned not, nor charged the Most High foolishly. Now let's go to Job 2. And we'll start at verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And Salaki, if any background in the any noise in the background. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So, But look at what Job en endured, man. You know? Or look what he went through. Right? Verse 3, And the Lord said unto Satan, 
Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the most high and eschew of evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, and although thou movest me against him, to destroy him without cause. Verse 4, And Satan answered the Lord, and said, Skin for skin, yeah, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But pull forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Verse 6, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Jab, uh, and smote Jab. And smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. Right? And that's something else that he went through. You know? You know? And that may happen to certain brothers. You get, you, uh, you stub your toe. You get your finger jammed in a car door. You know? But watch, uh, watch what Job said. And then watch what his this female said. Uh, and he took him a posture to scrape himself with thaw, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity, curse the most high, and die? Showing you that the woman is the weaker vessel, and is more easy, easier uh, for demons to access. Right? A demon will jump on your woman to get to you. You see Verse 10, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Most High, and shall we not receive evil? What is that? Balance. Good and evil balance. Right? So Job understood balance. Which Job in the Hebrew is Ayawab. Right? Uh, and all this did not Job sin with his lips. You see? And uh, when you go to the, I believe it's the end of the chapter, it shows that basically the outcome of Job. Let me see. Look at that, man. Let me see. Where should I start? Yes. I'll start at 7, Job 42 and 7. Let me see where we're at. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you for him will I accept lest I deal with you after your folly and that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right like my servant Job so Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Naamathite went and did according as the Lord commanded them and the Lord also accepted Job I'm sorry the Lord also accepted Job Verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And they eat uh, bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every man, and everyone an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, which is a scripture that says, um, basically, I think I think it's asked not why the why the beginning is this way. It's I, the Lord willing it comes to me, you know. I think, it, I think it's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Maybe it might be the seventh chapter. Right, but Job 42 and uh, 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah. 
in the name of the uh, third, Karen Hapuch, and in all the land where were no women found so fair, meaning beautiful, as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Right after this lived Job in 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. <laughs> Right, and I wanted to look up that word bemoan because it mentioned that uh they bemoan Job. Express discontent or sorrow over. Right. Let's go to the book. You know, and then you know, got the situation where uh you know, Daniel was thrown in a fire and also where he was uh, in the lion's den, you know. But, um, hey, let's just, hey, let's go, right. <laughs> you know. Daniel, uh, not one, Daniel three. Where, uh, let's see. Right, um, Daniel 3 and 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits and a breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dara in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges and treasurers, the counselors and uh, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedica dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Then in Herod, a herald, cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of, the, of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, oh, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Right, and it's a lucky if I'm going a little fast, you know. Uh, verse 8, wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the Sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right, which that's their Babylonian names. But, uh, let me see. Let me see if I could find it. Yeah. Uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Right? Verse 7. Oh, Daniel 1 and 6. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is uh, uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Right, Daniel 3. And uh, 13, then Nebuchadnezzar, oh no, 
Daniel 3 and 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bandigo, right? Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image that which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Right? Verse 15, Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that pow who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our power whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, right, it's a balance. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. See that? Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury in the form of his visage, right, his facial expression, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Which we know the Lord is in full control, so the Lord had that happen. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of the Most High. See that? You see? But another example of how your mind should be Right? Another example of how your mind should be regarding enduring. Because he said, you know, basically if the Lord deliver us, delivers us from the burning fiery furnace, so be it. But if he doesn't, so be it. We're still not going to, you know, go off. You know? And that's how you got to be, man. You know? So... A lot here. Let's see, Daniel 6. Right? Daniel, and this will be the last, like, chapter. But let me, uh, Daniel 6 and uh, 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. Right? Uh, 
uh, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. And if um, Salaki, if if before this I said um, if I mentioned Daniel being uh, cast into the burning fiery furnace, because it wasn't, it was Hananiah, right? Uh, Azariah and Mishael. I'm not sure if I did, but that's not the case. Daniel, the third chapter is dealing with, you know, Hananiah, I mean, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And then Daniel, the sixth chapter is dealing with, with when Daniel was cast into the uh, lion's den. Right? But the lions didn't, you know, do what the, what the Lord could have had them do. Uh, Daniel 6. And two, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king shall have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the king, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error or fault found in him then said these men we shall not find any occasion against this daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his power then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him king darius live forever all the presidents of the kingdom the governors and the princes the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal st statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days save of thee o king he shall be cast into the den of lions which the word petition petition definition a formal written request right make or present a formal request about to hit an hour good lord <laughs> all right daniel six and eight now o king establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the medes and persians which alter it not wherefore king darius signed the writing and the decree now when daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being open and his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his power as he did aforetime. <clears throat> then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his power. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed the decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man Within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altered not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, right, which the tribe of Judah are the so-called Negroes, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make it this petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore to please with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establishes, establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto D Daniel, thy, thy God, whom thou servest continually, he would deliver thee. Wow. Verse 17, And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might be not I'm sorry, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his place and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. 
and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came, and when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel and the and, um and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living power, is thy power whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My power I have sent his angel, and have shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And what does that show you? The Lord is in full control. You know, you, you may be in a den with, you know, or you may, uh, you know, you may be in a, you know, just different things, you know, be getting chased by a dog or whatever, or you may, uh, it's a lot here for me, but, um, you may come across a dog, you know, that may look a little scary or whatever, right, but you understand that the Lord is in full control, which, if I'm not mistaken, I talked about that. And that lesson that the Lord had me bring out entitled, uh, Grow More Spiritually Mentally, or something like that. <laughs> right, but Daniel 6 and 23, Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his power. And that's why the scriptures tell you, Uh, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus uh, 2 and 13. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended, right? Be but because Daniel believed, right? But, well, you see, Daniel believed, and he was defended, Right? Let me see. See? So now, it would probably get an hour. Or oh, almost. I'm going to just, you know, a few more scriptures. Right? Romans 12 and 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. See that? Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. See that? Right? Distributing to the necessity of saints. Giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Uh... Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Right, but the point but the point is uh it mentioned patient and tribulation. See? And real quick, let me get a second edge of sixteen and seventy three. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold and the fire. See that? Let's see, First Peter. First Peter one and six, when ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through many fold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. You see? Go to Matthew ten and twenty eight. <laughs> Uh, Matthew 10 to 28, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the uh, soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, which that's not talking about a fiery hell under the ground, man. That's talking about on the earth, 
notice it said, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body. So wherever the soul and body is together in hell, where's your soul and body together here on earth? Because when you die, the dust returns to the earth, right? Your body decays and your spirit goes to the most high who gave it. So that's not talking about no burning hell. That burning hell under the ground is false doctrine. All right, when it says, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body, right? When your soul and body is together in hell, that's on the earth. The scriptures say, and I saw under the sun, the place of judgment. That's talking about the earth. The earth is under the sun, right? That hell is a false, okay? That hell doctrine is false, okay? And uh, let's end it, Lord willing, at the book of uh, 2nd Edges 7 and 50, 57. Right? Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. So with that, Lord willing, you ratify, call Halim Lai, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Habakakwadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, salutations to the hopeful elect scattered across the earth. See you in the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.